Hey, I'm Mike with woodshopmike.com, and today I'm going to show you how to build this coffee table. Now, this is a pretty simple project that most woodworkers can take on, but there are also a few opportunities for more advanced joinery techniques, such as the breadboard ends with tongue and groove joinery, and also some notching for the frame there at the bottom. So, let's get to the build. This project is built with reclaimed southern yellow pine from plans that I have available on my website. To begin milling stock for the legs, I start off on the joiner and establish two flat surfaces that are square to one another. Then, at the table saw, I rip the boards to rough width. I cross cut the boards to rough length at the miter saw and then glue together two boards per leg. After the legs were milled to their final width and thickness, I filled any voids with Total Boat High Performance Epoxy. I used packing tape to confine the epoxy and keep it from just flowing out through the cracks around the area being filled. To tint the epoxy, I simply used sawdust. With the epoxy cured and any excess removed, I cut the compound angles on the end of each leg. At this point, I moved on to milling stock for the apron and stretchers. Since the legs of this table are splayed at a compound angle, the apron and stretchers need to have a parallelogram cross-section. To do this, I cut an angle on each side of the boards. I then cut the corresponding compound angles on the end of each piece. I chose to assemble this coffee table using pocket hole joinery, but the design can be adapted to utilize any means of joinery you prefer. Before drilling the pocket holes, I first scribe a line as a reference to position my pocket hole guide block. I started by assembling each set of legs on the left and right side of the table. I used plywood as a spacer to inset each apron and stretcher and then clamped everything together before running in the screws. Next, I set the left and right leg assemblies upside down on the bench and position the aprons. I used my longest parallel clamps to hold everything in place and check for square before running in the screws. I finish off the pocket holes by gluing in some dowels that would be flush cut once the glue cures. Next, I move on to cutting the center stretchers and notching out the bottom stretchers per my plans until I achieve a snug fit. I like using a multi-tool like the one shown here with a flush cut blade to trim off those dowels. Lastly, I use my biscuit joiner to cut slots for Z-clips that will hold the tabletop in place. Now I move on to building the tabletop. Here I'm starting out by rough cutting my boards to length on the chop saw. Since I have an 8 inch joiner, I need my boards to be no greater than 8 inches wide. Also, while I'm ripping the boards to rough width, I want to make sure to remove the pith from each piece. This particular board has cupped considerably. Notice the board is on the saw so it will rock. This is intentional so that the board falls away from the blade once the cut is complete. With a second cut on this board, I finish removing the pith. 
Before gluing up this panel, I joint one face and both edges to ensure a flat glue up. Before running the panels through the planer, I scrape off the excess glue, and after several passes, the panels are finished. At this point, the panels are ready to be ripped to their final width on the table saw using a glue line rip blade. Now I glue up each half of the tabletop and set it aside while the glue cures. I fill all of the voids in the tabletop with epoxy like I'd previously done for the legs. I start off with a card scraper to clean up the excess epoxy and then transition to my sander to go over the entire tabletop. Here I'm using the Craig plunge saw along with a woodpecker's square to cut the ends of the table square with the sides. For the breadboard ends on this table, I use a tongue and groove joint. I first cut the tongue on the table by marking how deep I want the tongue to be. Then I set the depth of my plunge saw and make a series of cuts to score the wood. After that, I clean up the surface with a sharp chisel and repeat the process on each end and side of the tabletop. Now at the table saw, I'm cutting a groove in each breadboard. I'm using a flat grind ripping blade so that the bottom of the groove is flat. Alternatively, a router table could be used here instead. An important thing to notice here is that the breadboard is longer than the table's width. This allows for easy removal while the fit is being tested. After a little refining of the tongue, the breadboard is ready to be attached. To allow for seasonal wood movement, it's important to only glue the middle third of the joint. These Bessie clamp extenders don't get used often, but they sure save the day when gluing on these breadboards. With the glue cured, I grab the plunge saw again and cut the breadboards flush with the side of the tabletop. Hey, if this is your first time to the channel, welcome and thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification so you don't miss another video. Thanks. To finish this piece, I first apply pre-stained wood conditioner since this table is made of pine, which is notorious for not taking stain evenly. Once the conditioner was cured, I then applied Minwax Performance Series Stain in Country Pine. To secure these two pieces together, I first set the table top, top side down on some bench cookies on the floor and then I centered the base on the underside of the tabletop. Using Z-clips and my impact driver, I secure the top and base together. After staining the top, I secure the center stretchers using one and a half inch screws and counterboard holes. All right, well that's gonna wrap us up for the day. I hope you enjoyed the project and hey, thanks for watching. Now, if you wanna build this coffee table, be sure to check out the plans that I have linked below.
Oh, you're still there. Awesome. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, I got another one queued up for you right here. And if you want other awesome content from me, check out those. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit the like and subscribe. And until next time, have fun making something.